Warning! This podcast contains spoiler words and explicit language. With no discretion is advised. Scary cat. Have a scary chat. Scary cat with Bob and Ash. Welcome back to Scary Cat. I'm Robbie. And I'm Ash. And this is the podcast where one person who loves horror films... And someone else who doesn't like them at all. ...watch and review them. This is our anniversary weekend. Mm-hmm. This is 11 years. What are we supposed to do on 11? I don't think that we abide by any of that stuff anyways. This is <laughs> no. the very first year that I've even gotten flowers for our anniversary. And on the card I wrote how many times you've gotten flowers for your anniversary. Three Or how many times you've gotten flowers, period. In general. The answer? Three times. We've been together for 15 years? According to the Eternity Rose, the first year is paper. (laughs) (laughs) I think I possibly got you paper on our first anniversary. I don't think you got me anything for our first anniversary. Uh, If it's the modern theme, it's clocks. The color is gold or yellow. The gemstone is gold jewelry. That's not a gemstone. It says no stone specified. For 11 years? Right. No, for first year. Well, let's just skip to 11. Uh, 11th year is steel. What? Hard steel. Oh. Well, you did get that steel air freshener. Your son got that. Ooh, if you make it to 50, you get gold. If you make it to 45, you get sapphire. If you make it to 40, you get ruby. Or do I get ruby? I think it's things that you buy for me. That's shitty. It's not. It's patriarchal. How come I don't get anything? Well, because I give you stuff all year. I gave you children, which is the gift that keeps on giving. You have to make it to 60 years if you want to get a diamond. Maybe that's why 50% of marriages end in divorce, because they skip to the 60th step. Oh, yeah, they jump the gun. Right in the beginning, and they buy, like, fancy, like, expensive rings and stuff, and then they there's, there's nowhere to go from there. I think there's something to that. So, on this occasion of our anniversary... So, let me just, let me just say... We are we are doing this on our anniversary. That's how dedicated we are. I chose a romantic movie that uh, is all about relationships. It's called Under the Shadow. Under the Shadow. What uh, what year was this made? This is 2016. Um. Okay. So Under the Shadow. Um. Let's see. What could you possibly be about? Can I can I tell you mine? Sure. Okay, so you know in The Lion King, when Timon and Pumbaa are singing their song, Mm -hmm. Akuna Matata, the way that they eat is they flip over the rocks and they get the bugs out from underneath, right? What if this movie is the point of view of the bugs living under the shadow of the rocks when they flip them over? So you think that this is a horror movie based on... The bugs. From the the Lion King. So, like, a bug's life. I mean, yeah. Yeah, what if a bug's life was a horror film? I mean, it kind of was. They were going to get eaten by the grasshoppers or whatever. Isn't every bug's life kind of a horror film? True. I mean, but that's what they get for being so tiny. They don't want to do... If they don't want to live like that, they shouldn't be so fucking small. Evolve, motherfuckers. Seriously. We did. That's true. Look at us. Look how hard we worked. We have couches. Yeah. We figured out toilets. All they can do is form a death ball. I don't know. Ants are pretty amazing creatures. I saw a, a video once of a guy. He took an anthill and he poured like molten um, oh, yeah, like yeah. silver lava? into it. Mm, or not lava. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think anybody has access to lava. <laughs> <laughs> no. But yeah, no everyone one, I know what you're talking access. about, like the molten silver. And so he, he poured it down in there. It wasn't silver. That would be insane. Some sort of like... Expensive habit. Metal thing. So he poured it down in there and uh, it filled up out all the caverns that they, you know, created. And it was, it's, it was insane. Like how intricate it all is. It's pretty mm. neat. Ants are pretty cool. But not one TV. Well, they don't need it. They have imaginations. So how, how likely do you think it is that this is going to be? I'm going to go ahead and say a 0% chance that that's what this film is about. 
I'm going to say not even possible. If it's not, it should be a film. I mean, they already made it. It's A Bug's Life. And Ants. Um, so, we'll watch this film. And if it's not about bugs, and it's not animated, then we're going to get to work on a script. Rob's going to get to work on a script. I'm going to take a nap. All right, we're back. So that was Under the Shadow. Was not animated. Was not about bugs. Praise Jesus. I mean, really. This was an Iranian movie about a mother and her daughter and vaguely about her dad. Who's dad? Oh, the little the, girl's? The little girl's dad. Well, I mean, he was deaf. I mean, it was about the three of them, really. We saw it on Netflix. It's free on Netflix or with subscription. Didn't have the subtitled version. They only had the overdub. Which was weird. Which makes it really hard to get into the film. The inflection is always really different. Didn't we try to watch it in Persian? Well, it was, Parisian. <laughs> it was really well, strange. I was, I was looking through the, the different languages and I was like, well, is it is it in Parisian? Like, well, maybe maybe if we just pretend like Parisian is Iranian, <laughs> we, can, we can match it up. It's not even close. Under the Shadow is written and directed by Babak Anvar, Anvari. He did a film called Two and Two in 2011 and then this, this one in, in 2016. This film has... It kind of did what uh, Train to Busan did. Not a bad film. Did you like it? Yeah, I liked it. It was fine. I was very excited that it wasn't about bugs or Timon and Pumbaa. For a long time, it's not even about ghosts. Right. It's about life in Iran during the war. I believe it's the Iran-Iraq war. And so there's constant bombings. This takes place in Tehran. And so people were fleeing from the city. So this is a, a woman who lives there with her daughter and her husband. Mm. She was in school to be a doctor. Yep. Um, she wasn't allowed to complete her training because she was political during the revolution. Wait, what did they keep calling it? The Cultural Revolution. Yeah, she was political during the Cultural Revolution. Her husband was not, so she was not allowed to continue her studies. He was. So he became a doctor, and they had a daughter... He later said that the reason she was going back was because her mother had just passed. and Oh, yeah, and that's why she wanted And yeah. her mom really wanted her to be she a She has a book. It's like a medical book that's signed by her mother at the front. And when she's getting rid of all her medical books, when she finds out she can't go back in, uh, she keeps that one and locks it in a drawer. And that comes into play later on. It's a, kind of a paint-by-numbers ghost story. But what makes it interesting is the Islamic lifestyle that, that they lead. But that she's not really super well, yeah, keen on. It, it seems like in her building, they're pretty secular. Well, and she also wears pants, and she has short hair. She watches Jane Fonda tapes. They have a VCR, which, which apparently they're not, they're supposed, not to supposed to have. It was so weird to see Jane Fonda, hmm. like, that young, though. She had some mad flexibility. Jane almost, Fonda did? No, no, no. Uh, the oh, main, the actress? The main actress. Her name, which I'm going to butcher terribly, is Nargis Rashidi. There's no way that's what it is. She's an Iranian German actress. Apparently, she lived a version of this. Like this, this was her life, where they had to go down in the basement a lot. Hmm. I imagine that would be wildly terrifying. Like we've never experienced anything like that. Tornadoes. If you were to talk to somebody at your work about what we do during tornadoes, it's not something that happens a lot up here. Right. So they probably see that as terrifying. As we would see, like, a missile lifestyle, like running from missiles. I don't know. Maybe it's just because we grew up with tornadoes. And yeah, so... and, that, and that's that's the same with everything. Like, I mean, look at Syria. What's happening there is terrible, but the kids have always dealt with it, so they just don't know that any different. I think that they know that it's terrible. Even in this film, they kind of they touched on it. When they went down to the basement the first time, the kids down there just started talking to each other. Like, they're all just kind of playing with their dolls. Well, everybody went down there and started talking to each other. Yeah, it's just it's just a part of life. Anytime that you are on code, code red all the time, suddenly code red becomes the new normal. Right, it's normalizing terrible things. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting to see their lives inside of this war. And they take this ghost story that's a pretty generic ghost story, and they wrap it around that. 
they do come at it from a from a more Islamic uh, angle, whereas we would call them ghosts or we would refer to them as like evil spirits. Uh, they refer to them as jinns, which is as basically genies or demons, which I didn't know were the same thing. But from that makes Aladdin very different, doesn't it? Well, they talk about in apparently in the Quran it says that jinns have the ability to be good or bad. They can make up their own minds. Mm -hmm. So, like the genie was a good jinn. Interesting. Uh, this is a bad jinn that they've. Was it bad? I mean, it was sort of mischievous. Nothing particularly bad happened because of the jinn. But it tried, especially towards the end. Did like, it? So they talked about like the little boy who's blind, who's deaf. Nope. Or who's mute. Yep. After his his parents were killed in front of him. Yeah. And he just stopped speaking. He didn't speak. However, in every single scene we see him in, he's speaking to somebody. Well. They're trying to tell you that, like, something's happening, and that's why he's By talking. By literally telling you that while showing you talk him talking all the time. His aunt, who is also the wife of the the landlord, tells her that the djinn will try to get something which belongs to you, like something you care a lot about, so that it can control you. Right. And it won't leave you alone. That's what I would do. So it steals her daughter's... Her daughter's name is Dorsa. Dorsa. And it steals her doll. Steals her doll... And starts haunting her. So we have to back up a few ticks. Okay. So um, our main character, whose name is... Is it Shide or Shide? Shide. Sure. Okay. So our main character, Shide, mm -hmm. um, has a daughter. Dorsa. Who is probably, well, like six or seven? Yes. Maybe eight? Uh, yeah, probably closer to eight. Because she's old enough to do things on her own, but still young enough to play with dolls. Yeah, her doll, whose name is Kimia, is like her whoopee. She keeps her, all, she wants her all the time. Yes. It. Yeah, so. So, and then she also has a husband whose name is. Iraj. Iraj. She calls him Raj, though, doesn't she? Yeah, but she's allowed to. They're married. Sure. So, he's Mr. Iraj to you. Okay. Next time I see him, <laughs> Mr. Raj. I'll make sure to call him Mr. Raj. After we find out that Shide can't be a doctor because she can't finish her training, we find out that her husband has been called to the front lines. Do you think that the fact that she was a woman also played into it? I mean, maybe there was extra strain on her, but Iran in the 80s was pretty, like, pretty, like, fairly liberal for the Middle East, wasn't it? Not according to this movie. Although this might have been the cultural revolution that they talked right. about. Right, I think it's And at a certain point, he did it? say, he's like, this is... Because at a certain point, the haunting gets a little too much. And she runs down the street barefoot and without a covering on her head. And she gets arrested for it. And when she's in jail, uh, she gets berated by... I'm guessing he's like a, a religious leader of some kind. I'm guessing he's like a... An imam? A, a mom or something. I don't know. I thought he was just like a police officer. Maybe like, he seemed more important than a police officer, like maybe the mayor of the town or something. Sure. But he comes in, he braids her, and he says that this is not the, you know. This is not Europe. Well, that's what they say to him. They say, are we in Europe now whenever she, they arrest her? Oh, that's right. But he says this is not, this is not the liberal loose morals past that we had oh right 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 he was like we have uh, we have we have morals or something have morality mor now yeah we have morality now something along that line. which is interesting which is interesting i'm also um currently reading the handmaid's tale mm. this is familiar yeah the movie does a really good job not playing up the idea that like women were oppressed during this time period and still in Iran, it just makes it a part of her daily life. Yeah, that she and she's has not to afraid of it. Get through, right? She's fucking fearless. Yes, as our as our storyteller, as our as our our uh, guide through this world, she lives in the world. She's not afraid of it. She's not afraid of anything. I think if she had been afraid of certain things, then we probably, as an audience, would have followed her through it. But you felt safe with her, you know, in yeah. a weird way. Like you felt safe enough to watch what was happening because she was so 
in charge of everything. She was so confident, and she gave zero fucks. Right. When she answered the door... She answered the fucking door. She would throw on the the hijab, but it was more like a, ugh, now I have to do this, instead of like a, oh, I need to get this on before they see me. Right. So She also had a black market VCR, which her daughter kind of sold her down the river about in front of the window guy. (laughs) Yeah. And she was like, shh. It's like, they got other things going on right now. But, um, okay, so her husband gets called away to the front lines. Mm, he's a doctor, so they want him to go be a doctor in in the battles. Which makes sense. Um, they call him to a place... She is not having it, though. No, she apparently he's been a few times before. Yeah, well, I think what they were trying to say is, like, this is an annual thing. If he wants to continue practicing as a doctor... Right, he has to serve. He has to serve so much time in the war. Yeah. Her daughter's doll goes missing. After the dad's been sent away to the war. Right. There was a point where the daughter wet her bed and the mom is just so upset. Like, could not, like, <laughs> she's just done with she's this. She's over it. I've been there. When you're gone is usually when shit like that happens. One time you were out of town and I was, I had decided for no reason in particular to paint the living room in the hall all by myself while you were gone. It was like 3 o'clock in the morning. Both the kids were asleep. I was high on paint fumes because I was painting the hall. Our daughter came up behind me, and she was like, I, I need to go to the bathroom. And I was like, okay. And she was like, I think I went to bed. And so I went into her room. She had a, a bunk bed. <laughs> uh. And so she's, so I, you know, she called me in, and she was like, she was like, I think I need to get it in the tub. And so I was like, okay. So I, you know, I helped her get in the shower. She turned around. Should I tell the story? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're telling it. She had like excrement, like all over her legs. And I was like, what's happening? She had a poop sedent. So, so I went, I went upstairs or not upstairs. I went into her room. I thought I was going in there to just collect her sheets and throw them in the wash so I I climb up in onto the uh, to the bunk bed. This is a very high bunk bed. I don't do heights either. So like this is all the things that I hate, pee pee and heights. And so I'm getting up there, and I like pull her covers back, and there's just like smear of poo, in like liquidy, liquidy poo, in the <laughs> sheets. And then our poor dog is up in the bed. Yes. He was up there with her, and he's just looking at me. His eyes are <laughs> about as big around me. as apples. And he's like, I just, she just, she pooped on me. <laughs> I can't, I can't move. So I got him down first, and then I'm crying because I'm laughing so hard. And I think I called you, and you were like, what, what's wrong, what's wrong? Because it was so late, and I was just absolutely fucking dying because it was so funny. But, I mean, there have been other times where shit like that happens. And it's not funny. It's just like, God damn it, I just want to go to sleep. I'm upset. I'm mad. Like, I, I'm tired. Like, I don't want you in my bed. I just want you to go to sleep so I can go to sleep. And then they don't. They don't do it. When you leave is the, is when everything breaks. When the kids suddenly have, like, nightmares or they become, like, Two years old again. It's nuts. Yeah. Like, she didn't want him to go. She was mad. She had her own shit going on. It's like this really weird guilt. Like, I can't be mad at you because you're in, like, extreme danger. But then you're also still really mad. <laughs> well, it also didn't help that the dad called in, called home a couple times. But every single time he called in, he immediately started nagging. Well, he wanted her to take Dorsa to his parents' house far away from Turin, mm. which makes sense. He was like, take Dorsa out of the city. I want her, I want both of you out of the city. And the mom was like, I can take care of us. We don't need to go be a burden on your parents. And he, you know, she, she's a very independent person. And maybe he comes from like a more traditional family and she didn't want to deal with it. And his, his, uh, his nieces and nephews or his brothers and sisters... They got the jokes because uh, they would refer to them as shrapnel. She said, you know, a war breaks out and we get the shrapnel. Oh, right. Yes. That's that's what she doesn't want to hear them yeah. say anymore. Well, and who does? That's tacky. Yeah. That's well, not a nice A-hole thing kids. to say about anyone. The ground zero for this film happens when they're downstairs because the warning went off. 
and a missile lands in the building. Like it, it breaks through the top level and it cracks their roof for their apartment. Right. Dorsey gets hit in the head with something and, and loses mm. consciousness. She goes back in to find Najiri, n- 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 the doll. Well, at the same time that the missile happens, we get a little bit more exposition about the idea that jinns travel through the wind. And they tend to attach themselves to certain emotions. Uh, and, like, good, bad, hate. And there's nothing that could be more evil or hateful than a missile. So the crack in the ceiling plays a big part of it because it seeps in from the, from the ceiling. Uh, you got a scene where she looks out the, out the peephole and, and a body, f- you know, zips by. A lot of zipping in this movie. People zip around. Well, they're, they've got shit to do. There is the added benefit of having, you know, hijabs and, and burqas so that these ghosts can literally be wearing a burqa. It's wearing like a flower print burqa. Yeah, it's the fanciest burqa in the I know, whole isn't film. it? Interesting choice when you could have just gone with the all black. She starts riding the edge of a dream and reality. Well, and we also learned in the beginning that... She's had a problem sleepwalking. Right. Some of my favorite moments were when she rolls over in her bed and she can see her husband's laying there. Mm-hmm. But he's talking to her, but there's no motion at all. Well, and he's looking away from her when he's right. talking. And so she goes to reach for him. And he gets violently yanked under the covers, and then she gets attacked by the cover creature. Yeah. Later on, we got a lot of the the burkad ghost floating around. The ghost plays the old switcheroo on her, where there the siren goes off, and so she's helping her daughter she get her. She thinks it plays the switcheroo on her. Well, yeah. So she she's shining a light for her daughter to find her coat. Uh, but she's not very attentive. She is the worst when it comes to this kind of shit. Like, she's like, I'm still here, and then she runs to a different room. Well, she's, I've been there. Kids take for fucking ever, and you you got shit to do. You've got to do certain things to get down into the basement so you don't all die. So then she sees her daughter run to the door. She chases her down to the basement, um, and she gets down there, and she hears her daughter crying upstairs. Like, she got locked in the in the house. And so, we've only seen the back of the girl's head that she's down there with. Uh, and it becomes very apparent that this is not her daughter. She shines, her, shines a light in her face and she covers her face immediately so you can't see who it is. And so, she, like, she kicks that girl away. Kicks her in the nose. And runs upstairs. Uh, and ends up getting, like, pulled underneath a bed by who she thinks her daughter is. A giant mouth monster. Yes. So she breaks free, goes down, and realizes she just kicked her kid in the face. Kid is pissed. Which is also part of the... This is what the ghost is doing, or the djinn is doing. The djinn's trying to get her, the daughter, away from her by convincing her that her mom is not a good mom. And it's hard to argue with at this point because she just kicked her in the face. I mean, she's she's just as frantic as anybody else is. It was an honest mistake. She thought she was doing the right thing. I don't know. You kick your daughter in the face. It's really hard to come back from that. Listen, I've kicked both of our kids in the face. <sighs> On a daily basis. And they're fine. And they just take it and keep going. <laughs> um, Could you imagine either of our kids if you kicked them? They would just puddle. Like, they wouldn't even know what to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Our children are delicate flowers. Yes. They cannot handle a I think kick we, in the like, face. were kidding with our son about giving him a spanking the other day, and he was like, what's a spanking? Like, he legitimately didn't know what it was. And then I didn't know how to explain it to him. Like, well, that's where we hit you. <laughs> yeah. You know the thing that we don't want you to do? You know, that thing. Yeah, that's what, we, that's what we're going to do to you. We're going to hit you. <laughs> we'll do that thing to you. Um, I, I hadn't realized, because with our daughter, when she was growing up, we still spanked. Not a lot. Uh, but it was an option that we had. Right. And then we gave that up as we got older and learned more. Right. And I didn't realize until we had that conversation with him that we had never spanked him. Right. So I gave him a, a inaugural spank just for the hell of it. That's not true. We didn't I do did that. <laughs> 
Um, he still doesn't really know what it is because I didn't know how to explain it to him. It becomes apparent that the ghost has stolen her book because she has a dream-like thing where she, she tells the ghost, you know, leave my daughter alone and take me. And I guess the, the djinn takes her up on it because it takes her book. Is that what happened? Yeah. Her... I missed that whole thing. Okay, so remember the part where she goes up on the roof and she looks through the hole? Yeah. What's on the floor in that? in that room the doll right oh no her book her book's in there so then she goes and checks her drawer and what's in the drawer the doll but all ripped up right so it's like she the doll it's like she had given that to the the ghost to to uh to trade places with her daughter Mm -hmm. but the ghost played her because it ripped up the doll and made it look like it was her that ripped up the doll right because the ghost is trying to turn the daughter against her which usually doesn't happen until they're at least, like, 13 or 14. Yeah, I mean, she could just let nature take its course on that one. Yeah. By the time she was hit puberty, she would have hated her mom anyway. That's so sad. It's gonna happen. We're only, like, three years from there. Ugh, about the pubes. 15, about 15, about five years before <laughs> she just ha- full out hates us. So this all finally ends when she drives her car straight through the wall to break out. Oh, because in a weird scene, the daughter and her are now the only people left in the building. Everybody else is gone. And it's just her and her daughter. Right. Everybody else has fled to Ron and gone into the country. So the, the, they're, they found the doll. They've, she's taped it back up and they're going to leave. Mm-hmm. And the siren goes off warning them that missile strike. When they get to the basement, the floor print burka ghost is down there and it tries to grab the daughter and she pulls her free and the whole, like the, the, the burka ghost becomes like a giant blanket that wraps up everything. Yeah. And she has to fight her way through the blanket. It's actually pretty cool. It reminded me of the labyrinth for some reason. She gets her daughter out. The gin turns into the ground and then it turns into tar oh yeah yeah like it was like uh like tar sands or whatever and Mm. it starts sucking the mom down into the floor yep the kid pulls her out it was kind of sweet and then they escape to the car they break through the wall and then they drive off into who knows what i'm guessing they're gonna go to his parents house finally go be shrapnel somewhere shrapnel somewhere uh that's the whole movie it nothing really happened wasn't bad I mean, other than than the aspect of being, like, a foreign look, a look at a life of somebody who is not us. Right. That was probably the more compelling part of the story. And as somebody who... Was just looking at something very different. And as somebody who fell in love with the Middle East when we were over there, uh, every time you hear a call to prayer, every time that, I was like, ah! I know, whenever we we were outside earlier this afternoon, just sitting and, and reading while the kids played outside... And uh, it was, it reminded me very much of our time in Turkey. And I just kept expecting, like, to hear a call to prayer. Just because that's kind of how we were. Yeah. We were just chilling out there. So how scary is this film? Um, not, not very. There's a little bit of tension with, like, all the bombings. And then whenever you start learning about the get and it starts kind of driving the mom crazy a little bit. You're concerned about the kid. You know, so it's more tense than it is scary. There is a jump scare where she's putting the tape back on the window. Yes. And the hand comes through, and I believe we both... Because, really, that's the moment of tension. Like, the whole movie is tension Mm -hmm. leading up to that moment. But, like, different kinds of tension. Like, it felt like it came from different kinds of places. Like, there was tension coming from her relationship with her husband and her relationship with her daughter and then her you know, doctor issues, and then, like, you know, the war and the bombings, and then we introduce the get. And so, like, there's a lot of different kinds of tension coming from a Will lot of different kinds of places. Will she figure out the Jane Fonda da- the Jane Fonda. I think workouts. she had it down. I, she yeah, looked she, fine to me. She had the moves. She did a good job. She felt the groove. Jane Fonda was, was amazing. Is this film gory? No. Nope. However, the kid does take a kick to, to kick to the face. It's a bloody nose. It's not a big deal. Who among us hasn't kicked their kid in the face? Well, as we've established, we do it once a day. <laughs> Is this film good? Yeah, I'd say so. It wasn't the best thing I've ever seen, but it was certainly interesting. Yeah. 
interesting take on a ghost story, a, a paint by numbers ghost story, but in an interesting setting. Yeah. So let's do the Bechdel test. Okay. Um, is there a scene where she talks to a female about something other than men? Several. Mostly ghosts. It's mostly ghostly. Or about her issues or her daughter or... Yeah, especially with the downstairs neighbor. And it's interesting because I think as Americans, we tend to see like middle the Middle East and like, um, like Islamic countries as like anti-lady. But then this like pretty f- feminist um, horror film comes out of Iran. And again, this was not a social cause movie. This is no. just it treats it as just it like wasn't, a, a matter like this, of life. Yeah. This lady was taking care of her own shit. So 2016's Under the Shadow, um, it's on Netflix. So if you got Netflix, you can watch it that way. Mm-hmm. I don't think we've seen anything with like Ghost Story in it yet. Yeah, I don't think so. So at least we get to check that box, and we get to check it on an interesting one, a different take on a Ghost Story. True. Uh, especially since we're going to dive into some classic ghost stories eventually. So, what's coming next week? Oh, yeah. So, we are leaving to go to Texas. And we figured in, in to honor our trip to Texas and to start our next series. To honor our motherland. We are going to tackle the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So, next week, we will drop our first episode of, of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre while we're in Texas. Um, and then we're going to finish the series over the course of the next 70 months. Nine years, because there's way more of them than I anticipated. Uh, yeah. So we're going to start that. Uh, we'll get that knocked Very out. Very excited. And we'll be back next week for more sweet goodness of horror film. So thanks to Brandon. T- <laughs> 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 the fuck was that coming out of my mouth? I don't know. <laughs> thanks to brian Tuzio for our theme song if you want to hear more from him you can go to soundcloud.com search brian Tuzio. uh if you want to connect with us and let us know what movie we should do or should not do or why you think we should do a movie you can get a hold of us on facebook instagram twitter all at scaredycatpod or dot com all at scaredycatpod um we'll be back next week with another one of these little things but if you want to Go to your podcast app of choice where you can review us and review us. It takes about five minutes. <laughs> it's super easy to do. You press the enter button afterwards. And There's a lot of hand motions up. going on right now. I'm trying to use my hands to plot out what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> Is it helping? <laughs> uh, That's it. Thank you so much for listening. We appreciate everyone. You're all amazing and beautiful. Adios, Puchacos. And don't let anybody tell you that you're a yellow starburst. You are a pink starburst. A pink starburst. You're worth it. You're special. And and gosh gosh darn it, people people like like you. you. I believe that's how that goes. (laughs) 